walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking in someone's eyes you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big for the last few years i've covered the turner classic movies classic film festival while things are a little different this year, thanks quarantine, the network, seasoned pros at catering to their very unique fan base, decided that in lieu of holding the standard film festival in Hollywood this year, they'd put together a veritable greatest hits for an at-home festival in 2020. TCM has plugged the content in to run at the same time as the festival, beginning the evening of Thursday, April 16th, and running through Sunday, April 19th. Interested in diving in? Not sure where to start? I'll be posting some of my picks as well as my first time watches over the next week or so as we get closer to the festival. Without further ado, here are my picks. If you haven't seen it, Metropolis is an essential. We're talking like film school 101 essential here. The 1927 Silence is a classic work of German expressionism, a movement which gave birth to some of the most iconic horror films over the following decades. Metropolis is a technical and stylistic marvel which influenced so much of what followed it. As such, this is a definite must-see for anyone and anyone interested in the roots of cinema. Sometimes you need an essential, other times you just want a little fun. And this is definitely one of my favorite of the Esther Williams movies, thanks to really fun performances by Ricardo Montalban, always a good decision, Betty Garrett, and Red Skelton. This movie has some great music numbers and some of the best water ballets of the series, and this is some good harmless fun if you're in any way a fan of musicals, or Williams for that matter, and this should be on your list. The Beatles, check. Now, Help has always been held up as a popular favorite among the Fab Four's films. However, their debut effort is an innovative slice of life from director Richard Lester, one of the go-to filmmakers to really capture the voice of swinging Maude Linton in the 60s. And he brings his trademark eye to complement the already delightful, strong voices of the Beatles in this must-see. There are a couple entries of, in this film festival of legendary director Alfred Hitchcock. North by Northwest stars Cary Grant and shows the filmmaker working at the top of his powers. He effortlessly combines his trademark wit and flair for suspense with bigger sets and exotic locations. North by Northwest is a joy of a movie and a must-see for fans of the master of suspense himself and film lovers the world over. If you haven't seen Some Like It Hot, why have you not? What rock have you been living under? The movie has been widely recognized as one of the best comedies ever made, thanks to not only the work of writer-director Billy Wilder, but also the performances of leads Tony Curtis, Jack Lemmon, and Marilyn Monroe. The Creature from the Black Lagoon holds a special place in the iconic run of Universal Monster movies. It's a bit of an outlier, fitting more with the series of atomic sci-fi films of the 1950s than the gothic horror movies of the 1930s. However, this is a fun, drive-in, caliber monster movie at its finest. It's a blast, and certainly one to check out if you haven't. I first truly saw Mad Love at the 2019 Turner Classic Movies Film Festival. This 1935 horror movie brings together the always delightful Colin Clive with Francis Drake and a truly legendary performance from the always awesome Peter Lorre. The movie is directed by Carl Freund, best known as an iconic cinematographer with his roots in moody German expressionism. One of his credits is on a film I spoke about above, Metropolis. It all ties together. I've always been a little frustrated that Harold Lloyd always seemed to finish a distant third to Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton in the age-old silent film comedian discussion. Safety Last was my introduction to the man who is now my favorite silent film comedian, and it's still my favorite of his movies. Make sure you stick around for the iconic clock sequence, which is really a marvel even when you watch it today. So consider this a personal plea from me. If you haven't heard of Harold Lloyd or haven't seen his movies, check out this movie. You won't be sorry. 
Network is one I haven't seen in a bit, admittedly. However, this Sidney Lumet-directed, Patty Chayefsky-written feature was a hard-hitting and timely experience even then. There is something so brutal and so grounded about cinema in the 1970s, and this movie so accurately captures everything going on in the industry around it. Things were changing so quickly and in only a few years, making the cinema of the 1970s worth watching for fans of history and classic film everywhere. From the revolutionary 1970s, we're jumping back to the Hollywood studio system at its finest here. Casablanca is a cinematic essential for anyone interested in classic Hollywood. This is that stuff that dreams are made of, to mix my references. The performances from Bogart, Berkman, and Henry are legendary in this captivating story, and this is one I can watch anytime it's on. And truthfully, this was such an experience, I still remember the first time I watched it. There's not a heck of a lot of noir hanging around in the schedule this year, but that can be forgiven as this one is here representing. This movie is directed by the incredible Jules Dassin, painting a bleak picture of the wrestling scene in England in the 1950s. It features beautiful performances from the always wonderful Gene Tierney and Richard Widmark, and anyone who follows me will know my penchant for Richard Widmark. This is a wonderful example of film noir and a great gateway into the movement. Classic mainstream Hitchcock has already been represented earlier in the fest with North by Northwest. This time they're showcasing his early work in a slightly deeper cut. The Lady Vanishes hit theaters in 1938, two years before the filmmaker made the jump to Hollywood. This was a late one to my own viewing queue, but it's a light and funny mystery. This is a great one to add to your list, especially if you're a fan of the Master of Suspense. Jean Harlow enough said. Chester Morris, even better. This movie is a bit of a deeper cut for the blonde bombshell, but it's a fascinating watch for fans of pre-code. Red-Headed Woman is a complicated and complex movie and it leaves you not quite knowing how to feel about anyone. However, this is really the mainstream explosion of Jean Harlow as she came to be known before her iconic roles in Reckless and Bombshell, so check this one out. Okay, this is my peak of the festival, right here. The hardest question ever for me to answer is, what is your favorite movie? However, my answer is always this film. Hollywood cinema gets no better for me than this joy of a movie. Everything about Singing in the Rain works and gels into a memorable joy of a musical. This one is essential viewing, so if you haven't seen it or need to see it again, add this to your list. You won't regret it. Last, but certainly not least, closing out the festival, they've added Victor Victoria, a Blake Edwards film from 1982. This is one I've only recently watched myself. The movie brings a stellar performance from the always luminous Julie Andrews, as well as a role which Robert Preston should have won an Academy Award for. I'm not kidding. Victor Victoria is a great film and a wonderful way to end the 2020 festival. Stay tuned for more, including my list of first-time watches. I'm going to make sure to catch up over the course of the weekend. What are your picks and must-sees? Shout them out in the comments. Stay tuned for more here at Female Gaze Productions as we look at classic popular culture through a historical and feminist lens. My name is Kim. You can find us on Twitter at GazeFemale, G-A-Z-E Female. As always, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.